Hi, I'm Emily Williams, the founder of the top success and personal development company for driven women called I Heart My Life. I grew my company from $442 to seven figures in my first 18 months. And since then, it's become a movement for women who know they're meant for something big and refuse to settle. At I Heart My Life, we operate with the belief that anything is possible and no dream is too big. We're all about combining business strategy, deep mindset work, high performance practices, money tips, and a whole lot of lifestyle to help you get the results you deserve in all areas of life. Because after all, we only get this one shot. This is your one-stop shop for all things inspiration. So grab your favorite drink and a pen and a notebook and get ready to be inspired. Oh, and if you're not a member of our community, go to iheartmylife.com slash join and receive all of our emails and announcements. And while you're at it, copy and paste this episode link and share it with three friends. Now on to the episode. Hey, it's Emily Williams, the founder of I Heart My Life and your host of the I Heart My Life show. This is episode 202. What to do when you feel pressure from your spouse to reach your goals, a real live coaching session with Tanya Alberti. So Tanya is an amazing student in our iHeart coaching program. She's gone through the program once and is now going through again as an alumni. And she started her coaching business completely from scratch with no clients, nothing set up. She didn't necessarily know how to coach. And so it's been a very busy six or eight months or so since starting on that journey. And now she's feeling a bit of pressure from her husband. He was very supportive and always has been throughout this process, but he want to see, wants to see some results from everything that she's put in place, specifically financial results and clients coming in. So much so that he gave her an ultimatum and said, if you don't get clients within the next six months or so, you're going to have to go back and get a job. Now, Tanya came to this coaching session with that question about how to actually handle that pressure, how to handle the fact that now she has this deadline looming over her, which doesn't feel good. But what we actually uncovered was that this was more about her and her beliefs and her fears than anything to do with her husband. So during this coaching session, we go deeper with all the things that are currently holding her back and stopping her from moving forward, stopping her from reaching out, booking sales calls, making sales and actually running a successful business. And of course, we talk about her husband and her relationship, but that's really kind of a a sidebar to this whole conversation. So if you feel pressure from a spouse, you can definitely listen to this episode. It's going to support you. But if you're also feeling stuck and not actually taking the action that you know is going to get you results, this is also an episode for you. So let's go ahead and dive in. This episode was sponsored by the I Heart My Life Mastermind. The I Heart My Life Mastermind is perfect for you if you already have a business and you're looking to scale. We cover tons of different topics. We cover marketing strategy, revenue planning, team, processes, everything you need in terms of mindset, high performance, really taking care of yourself as well as your business, events, publicity. We literally have seven coaches under one umbrella to support you and give you the answers to all of your burning questions. We host regular weekly workshops where you get your personal questions answered. We have retreats. You have a private Slack channel where you get to ask questions 24 seven. You have an extensive resource bank that helps you put in place our cash method in your own business and much, much more. This is one of the most inventive programs around. I don't know anyone else offering the service that we provide. So if you are interested in growing your business and transforming your life, definitely book a call with us to learn more. Go to iHeartMyLifeBooking.com and learn more about the iHeartMyLife Mastermind. All right, Tanya, welcome to the show and this coaching session. I'm super pumped to have this time with you. And just to give all of our listeners some background here. So you went through the iHeart coaching program. You're now going through again as an alumni. You started completely from scratch, building your business from the ground up. And now you're looking to bring on more clients, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you gave me a little bit of background and shared with me that one of the things that's coming up for you is there's a lot of pressure around meeting certain deadlines from your husband. And although he's supportive, he wants to see results, which I totally get. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, he was really reticent when I first signed up, um, because I came to him and I, 
love the the whole asking for support as opposed to permission, which really was amazing. When I first did your, um, I think I signed up from, it was the two day virtual intensive for new coaches. And I went to him and I said, Hey, listen, this is absolutely what I want to do. I know this is right for me. You know, could, would you please support me? So we figured it out financially and we're able to do that. And, um, he, you know, I finished the six months initially and I signed up again as a alumni because I know I still needed some support and, um, I wasn't quite ready for the mastermind yet. And I talked to him about that as well. And he's now at a place where he's like, okay, it's been seven, eight months. You know, when is this going to start producing as far as getting clients and being a business where you're bringing money in? And he said, listen, I will support you wholeheartedly. However, you know, if it's been like six months or so, maybe a year, if you're not bringing in, you know, steady income, then you need to move on. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. No, because this is not what I want. You know, I want to continue doing this. It may take a little while, but I really know this is what I'm supposed to do, you know? So I'm trying to figure out how can I best convey that to him in a way that you know, he understands and is so supportive, but at the same time, um, realizes that, you know, it's not going to be instantaneous, you know, um, he, the other day mentioned to me because I've been posting on social media and, you know, giving value. And he's like, well, you're giving away too much. You know, (laughs) it's like, you know, you need to hold on that stuff for people who are clients and, you know, don't share too much because then you're never going to have clients. So he doesn't really understand you know, from that perspective. So I'm kind of struggling with that right now, if that makes sense. It makes total sense. And I've heard this from so many people over the years. So I totally understand where you're coming from. Now let's start with you first and foremost. So why do you want to run this business? Why do you want it to be successful? What does it mean to you? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's who I am. Like I know without a shadow of a doubt that the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is because I well to tell you a little bit. I'm an intuitive success coach. What I do is help women step into who they are as spiritual beings, um, and help them to release that story that of so many women have grown up with that they're not enough, they're not worthy, that you know they have to do and be all these things in order to have validation, and it's just not true, you know. And I myself grew up with that story of feeling like. You know, I had to be, I had to be so skinny and I had to be perfect. I had to get perfect grades and, you know, make all this money in order to have value. And I've learned over my lifetime that it's just absolutely not true. And I want other people to know that. So I'm extremely passionate about that. And I really feel that I'm called to absolutely share this with other women. You know, I, I think about it all the time, you know, this is so important for people. And there's so many people who are caught up in this, you know, story about not being enough. So that's why I'm so passionate about it. And I really feel like I really, you know, have so much to be able to share with them to realize, you know, help them realize who they truly are, you know, as spiritual beings, you know, we all are. So amazing. And what are your financial goals personally? Well, I honestly, I would love to be, you know, making over six figures. I would love to say that, you know, I could have my husband retire, you know, have my dream home and, and all of these things that would be amazing, but I would love to make, you know, multiple six figures a year and not have to worry about money. I really would love to get to a place where I don't have to think about money, you know, that it's just a steady flow of income that I can feel comfortable in what I'm doing, that I could go travel and, you know, buy my family amazing gifts and, you know, have all these things that, um, you know, that I think most people want in life and, and have the creature comforts. So I think financially, I would love to be able to, you know, have a multi-million dollar business. I would love that. It seems a little out of reach, but (laughs) you know, I mean, ultimately I would love to have that for myself. Absolutely. Great. So we went from six figures to multi six figures to multi millions. So the real (laughs) truth is that we're looking to create a multi-million dollar business here. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to be realistic. You start where you are. Right. I mean, ultimately, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so what do you know about the amount of time that it takes to build a business? 
Well, I know it takes time and commitment. Obviously, it's not going to happen overnight. And I'm well aware of that. Um, you know, I put in, you know, eight to 10 hours a day, but, and I'm just starting, you know, so I know it's going to take time. I'm not expecting it to be overnight. Um, I figure in, in five years, I would like to be at least making, you know, I, you know, anywhere from three to $500,000 a year, but I know it's going to take time to build. that. So I'm perfectly realistic with that. Okay. Great. So in terms of your family financials, so your husband wants you to get a job, is that to be able to contribute to your life together or contribute to savings? Like is, does your life require that you have a steady income? Um, right now we're okay. I mean, he works. Um, I think it would help us sway some of his fears. He's one of those people who gets very nervous. Okay. You know, when it comes to finances and I haven't had a income per se with an official job in over a year now and we've been fine. Um, but I think it's like for him, I think it's kind of a cushion situation. I mean, we're comfortable, you know, we're paying our bills, you know, we have a home, everything's fine. Um, and I think, I really think when it comes down to it, I think it's kind of a fear for him. Yes. Um, we're not, you know, struggling, you okay. know, right now. So, okay. So, I mean, this often happens where one person has the dream, maybe one person is more entrepreneurial or more, um, okay with risk. And one person has a different timeline. Like you understand that it takes time to build a business. And we're going to talk about you getting clients now. So I, I want you to know that that's coming, but it's very normal for people to be a little bit different in their mindset. And plus you just spent, you know, over six months doing mindset work with us. And so you have the benefit of having transformed your money mindset and you have more trust in the process than he does. Cause he hasn't actually been through it. Is that accurate? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we want to be aware of that and not expect him to be in the exact same place that you're in. And I know that you don't, but I just want to highlight that. And we also don't want to make him out to be the bad guy because I know he's not, he's just coming at it from a different perspective with a different you know, set of lenses, so to speak. Right. And at the same time, we want to be able to not have that pressure on you because even if you're comfortable financially, if someone's telling you, you only have six months, whether it's self-imposed or coming from somebody else, that doesn't feel good. And when we put energy out there into the universe, that's frantic. Like I have to make this happen. People feel that. And I know that, you know, that as well. Absolutely. <laughs> so you obviously know your relationship better than I do. Where are you at in terms of having conversations with him about how this is making you feel and how it's not actually serving you to have the pressure? Honestly, I don't think I've talked to him about it, to be honest. You know, I've kind of listened to him because I kind of feel like, okay, well, I think a lot of it, in all honesty, there was a lot of, um, I I think when it comes down to it, if I'm completely honest with myself, there was a little bit of guilt around my asking him if this is okay for me to spend this money, you know? And so I kind of feel obligated, you know, like I need to, you know, now I need to produce because I asked, you know, for him to take this money aside to do this for me, even though I know it sounds silly, but, and, and he doesn't make me feel that way. I think it's totally me and my mindset, you know, I'm the one feeling, okay, well, I need to feel like I need to produce this because it's not like he pressures me every day. He's really only mentioned it like once or twice, you know, in almost eight months now, you know, so it's not like he's constantly barraging me with this, mm -hmm. you know, you need to produce, but I really think it comes from a place of, I feel obligated to show him that I made a good decision. Okay. You know? Yep. I understand. So there's two sides of the spectrum here, and it's really important to see both. We can use obligation and pressure to harm ourselves, or we can use it for motivation. Okay. So obviously we want to use it for motivation. You spent this money and it's your true desire to make it back and obviously much, much more. So we want to come from a place of desire. This is what I really want. This is my truth. Would you say that's accurate for you? That that is a desire? Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay, great. So we want to use it for good and to inspire us. So if we're coming at it from that place, would you say that you're doing everything you possibly can to bring in clients in this moment? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, I probably could do a little bit more. I could probably be a little more proactive. Okay. You know, I get a little nervous when it comes to asking people to come on sales calls or discovery calls, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've definitely been putting myself out there. I've been very present on social media. Um, uh, I've been present on all kinds of platforms, you know, Facebook, I have a Facebook group, a clubhouse, I've been active on clubhouse, but I think there's a little bit of hesitation when it comes to feeling confident enough to ask people to get on a call with me to share what I have to offer. So I think that's kind of where I'm coming up against a block, you know? Great. Thank you for sharing that. So money is always our coach inviting us to the next level. So you want to bring in your six figures, your multi six figures, and then your multi seven figures. And so money right now is sending you an invitation to be more bold, to be more confident, to invite people on those calls. So let's take a look at that. So what would it look like for you to do that more often? Like what would the tangible steps actually be? Um, well, I have plenty of people I could reach out to. Um, I haven't been <laughs> full disclosure. Um, I have plenty of contacts I've made through hosting rooms on clubhouse and people that are following me on Instagram and Facebook that I could absolutely take, you know, action and take steps to reach out to them and say, Hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. I'd love to help you. Do you want to get on a call? Let's talk about this. And I kind of haven't been doing that. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> I don't well, know look if it's at kind of a combination of laziness versus fear. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. But I, I, mean, I have people I can reach out to. I just haven't. Okay. So let's look at that. So do you believe that it really is uh, a portion of it is laziness? Um, maybe a little bit. Okay. I don't know. I think it's probably mostly nervousness and fear. <laughs> okay. Like predominantly. So, okay. What are you afraid of? I think I'm just afraid I'm not going to know what to say. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I'm afraid that I'm going to sound pushy. I'm afraid that I'm going to be overbearing, that they're not going to find value or find that it's something that's urgent. You know, I think a lot of what I feel is because I have a spiritual based business, you know, that people are very focused on you know, um, what's going to improve my life, what's going to make me money, you know, and all those things, as opposed to feeling connected. And um, from a spiritual perspective, I feel like maybe what I'm offering, and this is all mindset, obviously, maybe what I'm offering isn't necessarily urgent to them, you know, so I kind of have that kind of fear around, well, maybe they're not going to find, you know, so why should I ask, you know, maybe they're not going to find it important, important enough to spend that kind of money. Right. Okay. So here's a few things that I want to support you with. Number one, you have to sell to yourself first before you can sell to other people. And what I'd love for you to do is get clear on the specific ROIs that you can help people with. Because the truth is, if they're tapped into their intuition and they work with you, they will discover more opportunities to make money. They will discover ways to be happier. They will release their anxiety, like all the things that I know that you can help people with that will transform their lives. Okay. So that's the first list. The second list is why is it important for them to do right now? Like what worst case scenario could happen if they don't do this work and it can be like immediate worst case scenario, as well as down the road, what is the worst case scenario? And so this is what we always have to remind ourselves of as coaches and as marketers, you know, until you have somebody else doing your marketing and sales, like this is, this is you. So you have to sell to yourself first and get clear as to the why, why is this important and imperative for people to do right now and to sign up for? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I know that you can make your lists. And then when you approach it from that perspective, it's like you already feel that there's an urgency for them. You know, you can help them. And so there's a level of confidence there. And our mind, you know, even if you are selling to yourself, like that will get you much closer, but your mind still might try and stop you. So that's when you have to go back to the desire that you shared with me to impact women and to also transform your life and your finances. You have to go back to that why. 
And that why has to be much stronger than that fear and that nervousness that's coming up for you. So maybe that means every morning doing some journaling on, you know, what you vision for your life or reminding yourself before you get on Instagram, like what you want to create, what's the intention here? Why are we doing this? And really like, you know, we all know, we've talked about this in the iHeart coaching program, JFDI, just effing do it. It has to, it has to just happen. Right. And your mind might try and fight you, but you take that action regardless because you want the results and you want to help people. Right. No, absolutely. A hundred percent agree. <laughs> so and what are you I, hearing me say? What's that? What are you hearing me say? What's standing out for you? Um, the JFTI, of course, you know, um, I think when it boils down to it, you know, knowing that I know what my why is and knowing that I have something that people need is something that needs to be in the forefront of my mind at all times, you know, regardless of whether I'm posting on social media whether I'm reaching out to people that I need to know hundred percent within myself and my messaging that, that I know that people need what I have because I know it for myself, you know, that I've been there, I've done it and I know how much it's impacted my life. So by keeping that in the forefront of my mind, as opposed to, you know, all these little fears and worries that pop up that, um, by just, stepping into that and owning it and just doing it in spite of how I'm feeling in the moment is really what's going to make the difference. Okay, great. So we can say all of that out loud and you said it beautifully. What is going to really get you to commit to taking that action? And what I mean by that is, is it a schedule? Is it accountability partner? Is it having a conversation with your husband and say like, I hear you and I have my own goals. I have a goal of getting a client by the end of this month right? Like what are we putting in place to make sure this happens? I think honestly, for me, number one, it would be definitely having a conversation with my husband. Um, two, I think having somebody hold me accountable <laughs> because I have a schedule. I'm good about scheduling. I'm definitely okay. good about making lists, checking out my list. This is my schedule. This is what I'm doing. But I think having someone hold me accountable and I have plenty of people who are very good friends that would be happy to do that for me. Um, that I think that would really be helpful for me and definitely airing that out with my husband and saying, Hey, you know, this is where I'm at. You know, I'm going to do this and this is what, you know, I need to get this many people and I'm going to reach out to these many people, but having that accountability partner and having that conversation with my husband, I think that's going to be the most effective for me. Great. And when you say you're good at making lists, do you actually have like outreach or email five people? Is that on your list at the moment? Um, yeah, not so much the outreach, but <laughs> you know, I have like, okay, I'm going to do three IG posts and so many Facebooks and, um, so many clubhouse rooms a week. And I think I need to make sure I'm adding to that, you know, making sure, I'm, you know, DMing people and reaching out to people who are following me. And, um, I have not added that to that list. So that's probably definitely something I need to do. <laughs> Exactly. So I want you to have the conversation, the accountability partner, but also add to the list. And there needs to be clear action steps that are directly related to sales. Because right now you said you have this whole pool of people and you're not able to help them because a post, you know, adding value on a post only takes it so far. Like they need to be in sessions with you to experience the full value and transformation. Is that accurate? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> and you know, as well as I do, like if we gave you iHeart coaching for free, that would have been an awesome gift, but you probably committed more because you had paid for it because it was an investment because there were specific call times you had to show up. So that's the same thing we want to provide for your clients. And I often say like, I can't help you unless you pay me because that's the truth. The free stuff only takes us so far. No, you're absolutely right. You're hundred percent right. Cool. So as you can see, there are pieces of this that have to do with your husband, but it more has to do with you because <laughs> if someone says something and it affects us, that means we believe it to be true on some level. Otherwise it wouldn't have that, that effect. Right. Yeah. No, you're hundred percent right. I'm just laughing over here because I'm like, yeah, of course you're right again. <laughs> 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 okay. So we have our action steps. Is there anything else or anything at all that you feel could stand in the way of you actually getting these clients and taking these steps? 
you know, no, really when it all boils down to it, it really is just taking action, you know, and, and reaching out to those people and being consistent with that. Because I've, I honestly have had several people who have, you know, opted in for my freebie or they follow me on Instagram or they, you know, have participated in my clubhouse rooms or my Facebook group. And it really is a matter of just reaching out to them and following up. So there really is nothing holding back with me. Great. You know, it really all boils down to it. It's just me. Okay. Now I'm going to take this one step further. How many people do you have in that pool at the moment? Do you think? Probably a couple hundred. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So if I were to instruct you or encourage you to reach out to 20 of them today, how would you do it? Um, I would go into the DMs in Instagram and probably message them or reach out to them and connect with them on what Clubhouse is all about the DMs through Instagram. So I probably would DM everybody. Great. Just reach out to them say, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing. You know, I would love to jump on a call with you and talk to you and, you know, kind of follow through that way. Yeah. Great. So that's my challenge for you today. (laughs) Send 20 messages. 20 people. All right. I'm on it. (laughs) How will I know that you've done it? I will finish that and I will post in our Facebook group. Amazing. And say that I did 20 people. Great. That's 20 people. Awesome. By the end of today. So, and then if anything comes up where you're like, I don't know what to say to this. I don't know how to respond. You have our group to be able to ask for feedback. And then, you know, one of the things that you mentioned was around sales calls and not wanting to be too pushy and all that stuff. Remember that sales is actually service. And like we said, we can't help people unless they're in that, that container of coaching. And so just show up as your true authentic self, because you're amazing. You believe in your product, you've lived your product and people will feel that like when you express belief in what, you know, intuition, spirituality, all of that will do for them. Yeah, I think, and I honestly, I know, I really feel like once I have people on a call, I'm not going to have a problem. It's just getting them on that call. Yeah. You know? awesome. Because I'm very passionate about what, I, and I have no problem whatsoever talking about how I feel and what I think you know, what I believe to be true and, and my own transformation and what I've experienced. So I have no problem with that. It's just inviting them to that call. So I think by, you know, being committed to just reaching out to people and like, you know, we said with the 20 people today and just consistently doing that, it, it won't be an issue once I actually start getting people on the call because I'm not going to have a problem. You know, it's not even the sales process I'm worried about because I'm absolutely a hundred percent you know, believing what it is that I'm doing and believing in that transformation. Cause I've seen it in my own life, you know, my own like leaps and bounds, you know, completely different. So I have no problem talking about that. It's just, it's just taking those action steps to get people to invite them on a call with me. So great. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're going to bust through that block today. <laughs> 20 people today. <laughs> great. Thank you so much for your question. I appreciate you sharing vulnerable, vulnerably because I know a lot of women have this come up and a lot of people have this come up. Um, so I'm super grateful that you are here today and I'm excited to see you move through all of this and serve all of those clients, get those 200 people to be taking action. <laughs> Thank you so much. I so appreciate you. And, and it's so funny because even though, you know, there are things that I know in the back of my head sometimes, it just, it helps to have somebody to put it right in front of you and give you that clarity. So I greatly appreciate you, Emily. So thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the I Heart My Life show. Now do us a favor and tell people about this episode. It's truly our duty to make sure that the I Heart My Life movement is spread far and wide. The truth is life can be challenging, but it is possible for all women to love themselves and their lives. And while you're at it, send a link to this episode to three of your friends today, or maybe even post it on social media. Use the hashtag I hurt my life show. That's hashtag I hurt my life show. And if you'd like to help me personally, then please rate and review this podcast on Apple podcasts. Give us some stars, cheer us on and leave a review because believe it or not, that stuff actually really does help. And I read all of them. 
Please remember everything you desire is meant for you and possible. Keep showing up, taking action, and believing in your dreams.